Hi, I'm David Barnes, and this is ET Info, where I bring you information on emerging technologies from IBM. In some of my previous videos, I talked about Project Big Sheets, what it is and where it fits in the marketplace. In this video, I want to jump straight into a demonstration. Before I do, though, I need to hit a few salient points. One, big data is everywhere. The word petabyte has made its way into our day-to-day -day vocabulary. A lot of that information is out on the web. A lot of that information is unstructured. Customers have asked us for help gaining insight from that massive amount of data. Next, there's a project called Hadoop. It's from Apache.org. It allows us to deal with big data at a massive scale, at a web scale. It's proven technology, but it requires technical people to use it. Enter Big Sheets. Big Sheets takes away the complexity of Hadoop and it puts the power of big data in the hands of the line of business users. And so let me be quiet, stop at this point, pull up my machine, and I'll show you what I mean. So this is the Big Sheets user interface. Browser-based, obviously. And the collections on the side, you can consider worksheets. That's the four things you see on the left side there. Worksheets, spreadsheets, etc. We follow the spreadsheet metaphor. What I want to do in this scenario, I'm going to go to Twitter. I want to grab a bunch of tweets from around the world specific to some keywords I enter. Uh, Android, Blackberry, and iPhone. And I want to find out what people think about them. Running sentiment analysis. Do they like, dislike, love, hate? Do they want to buy? And then I'll do some other analytics. The first thing I need to do, let me go up into Big Sheets here and select Import Data. I'll give this a name, and I'm going to call this Video Sweep because I'm going to actually run one while we're doing the video. Down here, what's the source of the data? I could select HTML. I could go out and crawl a website, give it a bunch of URLs, one or many, and I could crawl those multiple layers deep. I could crawl for days, weeks, months, bring in the unstructured data. I could go to my computer, big data on my computer. Well, what if I wanted to go and grab some of that information, go to my hard disk, my computer, grab a worksheet or a real worksheet or, or some CSV files, maybe with my customer information, and then mash that and use it in a spreadsheet to compare against some of that external information. Network, I can go to structured data as well as unstructured, so I can go to traditional database management systems, inside or outside of my organization. And then custom, which I'll choose here, I'm going to select an importer, and this one is a Twitter stream importer. What this does, when I go to Twitter, these tweets come down and they're a long string of text. Uh, date created, time created, the username, screen name, the text of the tweet. We want to break those down into columns so that I, the line of business user, use them in my spreadsheet. So what we'll do here, I'll show you how we do it. First, I'm going to put in my Twitter name, which by the way, I will definitely gray out in this video. Um, let me put in my password. And I'm going to only run this for three minutes, just during the video. And I'll give it some keywords here. I'm going to select iPhone, uh, Android, and Blackberry. Now, I know that iPhone and Blackberry are phones and Android's an operating system, but you get the point. When I select Save Collection here, I am now going to Twitter. I'm asking it for all of the tweets that occur during this three minutes that contain any of those keywords, contain any of those keywords. Now, if you're a MapReduce person or a Hadoop person, we're only running one mapper here because Twitter is only getting us, giving us one stream. And if you don't know what that means, it doesn't matter to you. Let me go back home and you'll see that this collection, the sweep that I just started is here on the top and it's running. Let me pull up one that I already ran and this one I did the same keywords, but I ran it for 36 hours. During the 36 hour period, I got 305,438 tweets 
from around the world that had either iPhone, BlackBerry, or Android in the text. 305,000 tweets, and that's only 36 hours. Expand this. I could be running this across 36 days with huge amount of keywords. This could be gigabytes, terabytes, petabytes worth of information. In these tweets, there's the name of the user, the screen name, when it was created, and here's the actual text of the tweets, which in the video, I might have to blur over something because tweet text often contains some language I don't necessarily want in my video. But I've got all of that information. It's now in a form I, as a spreadsheet user, can use. What I want to do now, take these 305,000 tweets, build a new worksheet based on them. The data doesn't go away. I'm just using all of that in a new worksheet. Up here, I'm going to apply a macro. Now look at this. This is spreadsheet stuff. Filter, load, union, limit. I'll use macro. And from here, there are a lot of macros that we have within big sheets here. I'm going to select one language where sentiment analysis. Now what this is, Marie Wallace on our team created a language where analytic routine that said, I'm going to look at these different phones, consumer devices, and I'm going to look for sentiment. I like, I hate, I want, I want to buy. Now it's far more complex than just those word pairs, but she created it with language where and then she hands off the routine to us and we run it on big sheets using MapReduce. So you also can use other analytic tools because we've built big sheets with a plugin architecture. What I want to do here is I want to take the text field of the tweet and I'm going to run some of the things that she gave me. I can see by brand, by company, by target. So we're going to analyze that text for those things. In carry over here, this just says what other information do you want to carry over into this new worksheet. And I'm just going to add all because I might work with it later. When I select OK, Big Sheets now runs the analytics, but only on a sample. Remember, this could be billions of tweets. And when I look at it, I don't want it to run against the entire corpus until I know it's what I want. So Big Sheets just ran it against a sample. Now I say, yeah, that's what I want. Go ahead and click Run and let Big Sheets go and run against the entire corpus of data. Instead, let me cancel out of this and I'll go back over to Big Sheets Home and I'll show you where I already did this. So there's the 305,000. I analyzed them for sentiment. And here, 58,223 of those expressed some form of sentiment, like hate, love. In fact, here are some of them. Fantastic, special, glorious, amazing. Notice that here in the type field, they're positive indicators, maybe negative indicators. Okay, so I know their sentiment. I'm going to build a new collection based on that, just the ones that contain sentiment. And I'm going to run another simple spreadsheet thing, a filter. I want to take that field over here, it's called type, and I'm going to say any type field that contains, in this case, buy target. That means somebody has expressed some desire to buy. I select OK. Again, we're only running it, and I think I spelled buy target wrong. So let me go back into my sheet settings, make sure that I spelled it correctly. I did not, so I'll spell it correctly here. Now I run a small sampling of that. Say so yes, that's what I'm looking for. I could go and run it against the entire corpus. I love that word corpus. And in that case, let me skip that. Instead, I'll cancel out. And here it is. So I took my 300 some thousand. I analyzed it. 50 some thousand showed sentiment. Now, how many of those show a desire to buy something? Over here, 2,618. And that's in 36 hours. I found 2,618 tweets that showed some desire to buy one of those devices. Or in this case, operating system also. That's really cool. And what if I, man, I don't want to look through 2,600. Well, how about adding a visualization? This is IBM's Many Eyes. It's a visualization tool. We can use other visualizers in Big Sheets as well. We created it with a plugin architecture. So in this case, what I did is I said, run a tag cloud. 
and in the tag cloud simply, let me show you what I did. I said, look at the name field, that's the phones. Count the occurrences, how many times did that name appear as a by target in descending order and only show me the top 20 as far as a limit is concerned. And here we go, a tag cloud. Now you'll notice iPhone is spelled here with a capital P, here with a small p. I could go into the spreadsheet and I could combine those and merge those. Uh, Blackberry here with a couple of different spellings. But it's a great way to see a visualization of the information. Let me go back home. I'll go into that video sweep that we ran during this video. So remember, we just ran it for three minutes and here are the results of what we got from Twitter during that three minutes. Now this is purely for sentiment analysis. That's not all Big Sheets is about. It's any insights from structured and unstructured information. So let me go down here, and by the way, it's just about done with its count to tell me how many tweets did we just find in three minutes that contained Android, Blackberry, or iPhone, and the total number is 398. 398 tweets in three minutes. There's a wealth of information out there. What else can we use Big Sheets for? We went to the UK Parliament website. We scraped the web pages. Notice this is the GORP. It's XML markup. We stripped the content from the XML markup with Big Sheets. We took that and we did an analysis. People, places, and things. Based on that analysis, we found out what bills were debated in Parliament and who debated those bills. Talk about transparency in government. This is the resulting visualization. These are the things that have been debated. So if I select them, actually, here's a little bit better chart to show me that. Violent crime, identity, mental capacity, etc. What I like is I go to the bubble chart here and I say, okay, let's pick a politician here. Um, there's one of these that's my favorite because this gentleman, I'll blur out the name, voted on all sorts of things. Sounds like a good politician to me. Then I looked around and I found another one with just one little teeny thing. This gentleman only voted on energy or debated on energy. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? I don't know. Is he a young politician? I don't know, but it's worth looking into. I found insight from pages where I held, otherwise I would have had to go to that website, the UK Parliament website, and look through literally millions of different items to find this information, but instead we put the tools in the hands of the line of business user and we support massive amounts of data. And there are a lot of other examples. You can see my other videos at youtube.com slash IBM ET info. And you can learn more about Big Sheets by visiting our JSTART website. And that's ibm.com slash JSTART.